Hey, what's up? This is Harry Wagner from Harry's Situations, and today I want to talk to you about swing-out tire carriers, particularly some complaints that I have about swing-out tire carriers. Now, I do think that there are places that they make sense, but I think a lot of people buy these because they like the look and they regret their purchase. They are not cheap and there are definitely some downsides, so you're going to want to watch this video before making your purchase. <laughs> We'll go over not only my complaints, but good things about swing out tire carriers, and then I'm gonna show you some alternatives that I use on my own vehicles. Now you may be asking, Harry, is one of those alternatives mounting it on the roof? And the answer is no, it is not. I am not a fan of this either. I feel like that really raises your center of gravity. It's difficult to get to, and uh, not a great choice. One of the first considerations you should make is whether your spare tire will fit in the stock location. In this instance, we have a 33 inch Nitto tire for a spare. That will fit underneath a Tacoma with minimal modifications. And I think that is the way to go personally. If you can fit the spare in the stock location, you should do it. Now you notice I mentioned Nittos. This video is brought to you by Nitto Tire. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe to the Driving Line channel so you don't miss any future videos. And honestly with Nittos, the chances you'll even need a spare are pretty low. I run them on all my vehicles. They are super tough. If you're getting more than two flats a year, you probably don't need a swing out tire carrier. You probably need to get a new set of tires. As swing out tire carriers go, this is the cream of the crop for sure. There's some features on this that make it really well made. It ties into the bumper. It's got double shear mounting point here on the swing end. It's got a really good latch, so it's very sturdy. It's got a preload bolt here. So as swing outs go, this one is solid for sure but every time you need to open the tailgate of this truck you need to open this swing out so your hands are full of groceries your hands are full of camping gear sorry you got to set all that down i find i get into the back of my truck or the cargo area of my suv way more than i need my spare tire so that's a big consideration to make before you make a purchase like this Another consideration is if you park in a crowded area, if someone parks behind you in parallel parking, you need this much space in order to open this. So you might not even be able to get in the back of your truck if there's a vehicle too close behind you. You probably won't be able to get the tailgate down in that instance. So after all this, if you decide you still want to swing out tire care, which might fit your needs, things you want to look for are tying into the bumper, sturdy construction, double shear mounting points with grease zerks to keep this greased. A lot of cheaper options use like a trailer spindle and single shear. I've seen so many of these swing outs on Saline Valley Road where there's miles of washboard and just they fatigue and fall off. Some other things to keep in mind, you'll notice this, you can mount a can on here. This doesn't have a can mounted on it. It's really easy to add a lot of weight to add 100 pounds of tire and wheel to get a fold down table to add two 40 pound jerry cans, a 30 pound high lift jack, and all of a sudden, all of this weight is just too much for the metal to handle and it'll fatigue. So keep weight in mind if you do get a swing out tire carrier. Most pickups, like this Tacoma, have a side mounted fuel tank inside the frame rail, and then the spare tire sits in the rear down low at the back of the vehicle. But some vehicles are packaged differently and don't even have space for a spare tire underneath them, such as my Jeep Wrangler here. This came from the factory with the spare on the back. So this is not a factory setup. I've actually done quite a bit of work to fit a larger tire on here, but it is very factory appearing. So this setup has a great tops mount this mount is much stronger than stock, but it used the original tire mount that's just stamped steel. That cracked over time. I gusseted it, it cracked again. So I bought a rugged ridge mount. That mount really moved the tire way out further than I liked. So I worked with my friends at Samco Fabrication. A bit Goldilocks here. Eventually we got the ideal setup. This is Super strong, they laser cut and designed this at Samco. It also moves the tire way down low. So one of the considerations that you want to make when you have a swing out tire carrier is how high the tire is. The higher up, the more ground clearance and the better your departure angle will be, but 
the worse your rearward visibility is. So in this instance, we actually had to even clearance the rear bumper here, and the tire frenches into this location when this is closed. Nice and low center of gravity, good visibility, and it's sucked in close enough that I still have a good departure angle on the trail. I am not dedicated to running the same size spare tire as the rest of the tires on my vehicle. Now this means I can't rotate it in with normal tire rotations, but I'm betting that I'm not even gonna need this spare. So in this case, I have 37 inch Nitto Trail Grapplers on beadlocked AEV Pintler wheels on my Jeep. This is a 35 inch by 11 and a half, so a little bit narrower Trail Grappler, same tread pattern, still a Nitto. This is a load range C tire. I saved 11 pounds in the tire. You also notice it's on a non beadlocked wheel. I saved another six pounds there. So that's 15% weight savings on the tailgate of my Jeep. It adds up, particularly when I'm not really planning on using this anyway. Now you might be saying, Harry, what do you do if you do get a flat? Well, honestly, normally I would plug it. If it's in the tread surface, it's much easier to plug a tire than it is to change. Even if you have a swing out tire carrier where you can access the tire, it's still gonna be easier to just plug that tire. This is just to limp off the trail and get me to home safely. I'm going to replace the tire that was damaged with a light tire at that time. So I'm not planning on running this tire all the time. It's only in case of emergency. Now, you might be saying, right, emergency. That's why I want my swing out tire care where my spare is right where I can reach it. One, how often are you getting a flat? For me, it is not that often. Two, you have to consider too, how big of a hurry are you in? So I'll keep something like a fire extinguisher or a first aid kit. Those are things I also don't use very often, but I want them at the ready in case of an emergency because time is critical. If I'm stuck, if I get a flat tire, time is not that critical. I can take the time it takes to get my spare from the stock location or some other location I would rather have the convenience of being able to open my tailgate or the back of my SUV up all the time every day rather than have the convenience of a spare tire for that one rare occasion that I need it. There are a lot of plug kits on the market. You can get cheapo ones at your parts store. This one is from Safety Seal. To me, they're the original. There's some great kits out there from ARB, Power Tank, some other brands as well. But the things you want to look for, this has big metal tools. They're not plastic. The safety seal plugs are really sticky. I found they're much stickier than others on the market. It also comes with this lube to install them. Those are the sort of features you wanna look for when you're buying a plug kit. Even worse than a swing out that's attached to a bumper, in my opinion, is a swing out that's on your receiver hitch. Now, I don't understand how these cost $1,500 they rattle like crazy, they make a ton of noise, they really kill your departure angle so you don't really wanna go off road with one. And, and you might be saying, but Harry, your bike's mounted on a receiver hitch, what's the difference? Well, the difference is I put this on my truck when I'm going to take my bike out and ride it, and when I get home, I take it off, unlike your spare tire that you have on there all the time. I also, to be quite honest, don't love this configuration. Currently, I can't get the door of the camper open with the bikes on there, so I need to extend it out, which is gonna kill my departure angle. But the packaging of this setup doesn't really leave me other options to bring my bike. Similarly, there's not a lot of space for other things like my spare tire, which is why I have it in the factory location on this truck. Now, on my Ram, I'm running 37 inch Nitto Recon Grapplers on the truck. The spare is actually a Nitto Ridge Grappler in a 285, 75, 18 size. That works out to a metric 35. It's a little narrower, which is nice, increases ground clearance, and it fit in the stock location with zero modifications. Similarly, my wife's Ram, she runs 35 inch Nitto Terra Grappler G2s on it. Full size spare, 35 inch tire between the frame rails in the factory location on that truck. No problems. There is no reason to run a spare anywhere else, in my opinion. On my Ram, I am running a smaller tire. It's a 35 inch spare with 37 inch tall tires. Now, I haven't needed it. It's only there in case of emergencies. The size doesn't match, which is less than ideal, but I'm banking on I only need it to get me home. So I can't fit a 37 under there. I'll run a 35. Before I even pull it out, I'm probably gonna try and plug the tire if the puncture is in the tread. If the, the sidewall is compromised in some way, then you really don't wanna go down the road with it. That's when I'll put on this spare tire. But I carry plugs with me. 
All my vehicles have air compressors, so my first go-to is just to plug that tire. On my Ford, when I originally built this truck, I was running 40-inch tires. There's a 40-inch Nitto Trail Grappler in the bed. Now, currently, I'm running 42-inch Trail Grapplers on 20-inch Trail Ready bead locks, but I couldn't package a 42 in the bed between the shock hoops for the bypass shocks. So I'm still running the 40 in the back. And honestly, it takes up a ton of space. When I went to Alaska, my friend Brad and I actually built a rack that was flush with the bed, and we had a whole another level of storage there for boxes and duffel bags and things like that because the spare takes up a lot of room. Now there are some advantages to this because having the weight back here of the spare, the batteries are in the DZ box there, there's a 36 gallon fuel tank underneath here. All that weight towards the back really helps balance the truck out. I like to jump this truck, I like to take it through whoops, and having that weight towards the back really helps to keep the rear from bucking. But if you wanna put other things in the bed, most of the space is taken up, so it's less than ideal for day-to-day -day use. You'll notice too, once again, I'm running a smaller spare than the rest of the tires. This is a 40-inch Nitto Trail Grappler on a 17-inch Trail Ready beadlock wheel. These are 42-inch Nitto Trail Grapplers on 20-inch Trail Ready beadlocks. And again, I'm banking on not needing it. If I do need it in this truck, it has automatic lockers, Detroit lockers in it. They really want both tires to spin the same amount on each rotation. So in this instance, on the trail I'd be okay, but if I got back to the pavement, if I had a flat in the rear, I would have to put a 42 on the back, put the 40 on the front and unlock the hubs in order to make up that difference between rotations of a 42 and a 40. So another thing to consider if you're running something like a spool or full lockers, automatic lockers like Detroit's. So there are some reasons you would run a spare tire carrier. If you have an auxiliary fuel tank where the original spare went, or your spare is too big to put anywhere else, I get it. In all other instances, I think there's a better solution. Did I hurt your feelings? Did I forget some good reasons to carry a spare on a swing out? Comment below and let me know. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching Driving Line. If you guys like this video, consider subscribing to our channel so you'll never miss any of the content we create here. Whether you're into trucks, Jeeps, imports, domestic vehicles, or anything in between, we are here to fuel your passion. So hit that subscribe button and we'll see you guys next time.